as a lot of you know, I used to like regularly blog two or three times a week about all the social media news. That blog got a lot of traffic. I was getting 50,000 a month at its peak to my website. But there was a problem there because even though the blog got accolades, I won two awards for that blog. It's a multi award winning blog. Um, even though it's getting lots of accolades, it wasn't really converting into customers because I found out what was happening was people were coming, they were reading an article and leaving. And um, there were two reasons for that. One, it wasn't necessarily related to what I sold. It was driving a lot of traffic, but it wasn't related to what I sold. And secondly, I wasn't really packaging what I sold properly. And this was frustrating for me because I had all these website visitors and not much that I could do with them. I mean, they'd sign up for my email list, sometimes I think by accident, because I had a pop-up window and they would never open the emails. So it, was, it wasn't great traffic. And that meant when I wanted to like do, um, Facebook ads, for example, everyone was like, oh, just retarget your website visitors. It's the best you could have. But when I did that, I was retargeting all those people that really had no interest in what I was doing. It also meant if I wanted to create a lookalike audience, I was just creating an audience of more of the wrong sort of people. So um, I was ticking over, but I wasn't getting much business from my website as such. It was all a lot of like networking and there was a lot of like connections that I was making elsewhere and a lot of just getting noticed. And that was time consuming. And this is a, a problem I know for a lot of people. It's still a bit of a problem on my site because all that old content is still up there. Somebody, you know, one of the top ones is how to tweet more than 140 characters. You've been able to tweet more than 140 characters for a long time. So that's driving a lot of traffic to my site. If I really want to know if the people who are visiting my website are valuable or how just specific things about my ideal customers who are visiting my website, I need to do something. And I can fix that in analytics. Let's go into our reports. So the first thing we can do to find out who the most valuable people are that are visiting our website is we can go down to this uh, user attributes report. And this tells us a little bit about our users. And we're gonna go into demographic details. And I've gone here because this is the most accurate, like Google doesn't actually have that much data on the people who visit your website. But two things you can be pretty sure it knows about are the country that people are coming from and the language that they speak. So it automatically shows you the country. So I can see all of these here. See, these are in my target market. Ireland, United Kingdom and Ireland, are obviously my top, then the United States and Europe and Canada. They would be my, my top target markets. And if I scroll across, now, if you're an e-commerce site, your revenue will be a lot more interesting. I only sell a few products online, so my revenue isn't that exciting. Um, so there's two things. If you're e-commerce, revenue is gonna be important. Otherwise, key events. Key events are, are what used to be called conversions in um, and used to be called before that in the old analytics, they used to be called goals. These are the things you actually want people to do on your website. So for a service-based business, it could be downloading a lead magnet or a brochure. It could be um, filling in a quotation form and we'll, we'll have a look at that in a while. So this is what you want to measure it on if you're service-based it's also a, a good second measure for e-commerce. E-commerce, obviously, it's revenue. So here I can see, if I scroll across again, that the most visits I get are from the United States, second United Kingdom, third Ireland. But if I scroll across, we can see that revenue-wise, Ireland, even with its small amount of people, is winning. So, you know, page views aren't always, the, the or visits or sessions aren't the most important thing. We can also see that um, United Kingdom, uh, uh, United States then, and then the United Kingdom. But if I go right down the bottom, Netherlands, which is in my Europe group, is also doing really well. But as I said, revenue here isn't, revenue is important, but not as it's measured in Google Analytics. If I look at my key events though, I can see that actually the United Kingdom is triggering, is people from the United Kingdom are doing more of what I want them to on my website than people from the United States or people from Ireland. So that's really interesting to look at. I can see my valuable visits there. However, when I say my key events and like the, the United Kingdom is doing best, 
that's not so, it's, they're not actually doing best compared to the number of visits I have. So if you look, United Kingdom 2,300, Ireland 1,000, you can see there's not that much of a difference in it. And what this is what key event rate can tell me. This is the percentage of people who visit my website who trigger a key event. And in that case, thank you, Ireland, because this is where I live and where I love, is doing slightly better than the United Kingdom and way better than Ireland. So this is, re and again, Netherlands. Thank you to the people who visit my website from the Netherlands. Yeah, it's only a small group, but thank you. Right, so that's told me something. I can also, and this may or may not be relevant to you, it's not relevant to me, but I thought it might be interesting for you. I can also add a secondary dimension here, knowing that Ireland and the United Kingdom are my top um, countries, for example, I can click into the plus button here and I can break that down. I can break this whole report down by the device type that people use. So are people visiting a mobile, desktop, tablet, and what's the difference between those? So if I just type, start typing in device there, we'll see it comes up, device category. We can get down to brand as well, you know, if you want to break down Apple and Android, but let's just go for, for device category. And here we can see, if I scroll across just those important metrics again, um, desktop is doing better, small amount on mobile. Desktop for the United Kingdom is doing better, but also doing well on mobile. Ireland, Okay, so I can actually come in and I can type into the search bar, Ireland. I know I just went off screen then because that's my thing over there. And now I can see um, some stats just for Ireland and I can see desktop in Ireland is producing the best results. Now, it's not a big deal for me because I do check my sales pages work on mobile, but I know most of my traffic comes from desktop. But particularly if you're e-commerce, you want to look at that. Which is great, but that's all very well, but that's not like filtering everything. I want to just, what if I just want to see only the people who visit my website who fit into my core target market? So for example, here, if I'm going by revenue, um, which I'm just going to get rid of my island filter and let's just have a look by revenue. So if I just click on this, it will filter that it will order the whole report by revenue. So by revenue, I can see that people in Ireland on their desktop generate the most revenue. So wouldn't it be nice if I could just look at how people behave on my website that come from Ireland and visit from desktop? And you can, right? So this is this part two of the tutorial. Um, now we're gonna go into the admin panel. You will need um, admin access to be able to do this. And if I scroll down in this section here, we should see something called comparisons. Now these are quite new. So if you haven't looked at analytics in a while, I'm so glad they added these. So if I go into comparisons, it's created these comparisons for me already. So I can actually go in and I can see how um, organic traffic um, and paid traffic compare, which I don't run many ads, so <laughs> that's not gonna be a thing. Or how mobile traffic and tablet traffic compare, for example, I can do that. But I'm gonna create a, a, compar or, or a, a, a comparison based on that ideal customer from Ireland on desktop. Right, so if I click on new comparison and I'm going to select the dimension, I'm just gonna start typing country. It's much faster than going through the drop down menu. And select match type, I'm gonna go for exactly matches. And when I do that, when I click this third button, it gives me a big list, which is easier. And you can select more than one. So if I wanted to bring all of Europe together, for example, or all the countries in Europe that I target, I could do that. So I'm going to say Ireland. Right, so now I'm gonna add a new condition, which is gonna be desktop. So that was device category. So I'll start typing device again, just so that I don't have to do all the scrolling. Device category and exactly matches, select dimension, desktop and I'm gonna click save and give it a name and I'll call it say, I have to lean over here when I type. Oh, oh hello, um, best customers. Okay, and confirm. Right, now I've done that, I can start applying that to all my reports. So if I go back into my reports, so now what I can do, we've got this add comparison button at the top. 
and I can choose my best customers. You can see we've also got all users selected. Click apply. And now you can see I've got them all, on all these reports it's compared. So I can see that um, first, user, first time the users come to me, um, it's organic search tops in general, but from Ireland on desktop, it's direct followed by organic search. This is interesting to me as well, that those all come above email that I work hard on and organic social that I work hard on. Good to know that organic search is still working there. I can also get rid, I can just switch off all users here. And now I just see the data for my ideal customer so I can see how they're engaging with my site. And this applies then to all the reports. So if I go into my standard, where did my customers come from report? And again, I'm gonna get rid of that. We're into best customers. I can see again, direct organic search. This is all really interesting. I can change this to my source, which should show me the website people came from. And yes, direct, Google, ConvertKit, which is my email, newsletter, which I'm wondering what it is. <laughs> um, LinkedIn, Bing, Facebook, Facebook. So this is really interesting for that. What's more interesting though is, and I can also scroll across by the way and see if I got any revenue from there and just from direct and Google and email. They're the three places that I got revenue from these customers. You see, and that tells me that I should work on my search engine optimization if I want to target more people in Ireland and I should maybe attract more people from Ireland to my email list. But what's really interesting, what I can do the same with any report. So I can go into say my landing pages report. So which page do these people visit first on my site? Now, if I look at, and I'll switch the comparison on here. If I look at the comparison, I can see that um, there's a lot of people in the world coming to this blog post, face, picking Facebook competition winners published in 2014, completely useless because they never convert into customers. I mean, I have tried everything. If I get rid of all users, I can see that actually people are going to the important pages on my site. They're going to my homepage. That's what the trading slash on its own means. Uh, we can ignore not set. That's a whole other session. This is like one of my course pages. Um, this is like a booking page. So all of these are relevant. And even when we do get down to the blog content, you know, at least it's relevant, right? It's, it's 2023 blog content. This one is actually about Google Analytics. So I'm really happy about that. And also apart from, you know, there's people interested in my key products as well. So this shows, uh, this is good. And I can also see the key event rate for that. I can see which pages are driving the most key events, which landing pages on my website. Right, so that's cool. One more thing though, what about conversions, right? Which are now called key events. I've got like this customized key event report. When Google switched the name from conversions to key events, they also took away the conversions report, which was really annoying. I'm gonna show you a way you can restore it in a second. So now I'm there, I can actually see which key events people from Ireland are triggering the most. So what are they interested in the most? And after my contact form, which I would say is possibly a lot of people just selling to me rather than the other way around, I can see that my biggest performing lead magnet is this mini course, which I'm actually going to be running again really soon. That's actually, um, after uh, along with purchase, that's my second biggest key event that those people, specifically the people from Ireland on desktop are triggering. So now that I found out, let's just go back because I'm not gonna be in analytics anymore. Now that I found out more about my ideal customers and how they're interacting on my website, I can make those decisions like spend a bit more time on SEO because those people are coming from Google. And also, yeah, I want to promote the Connect the Dots course a lot more within Ireland because those are the events that they're more likely to trigger. Now it's a tiny amount of events there. So it's not really statistically significant, but it's definitely something I can work on. Let me go back into demo mode. I told you I would show you how you could put that conversions report back. How can you put that conversion report back where it came from? So you can see they've got a conversions report here. It's ga4builder.com. 
And basically you just put your property ID in, it's got all the details there, you click apply, and it will reinstate your conversions report that Google, I'm gonna say accidentally got rid of when it got rid of conversion. So thanks a million for joining me. I will see you next month. Bye-bye.